The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Media Match. A roundtable of Cowboys insiders. Dropping wisdom. And offering sizzling takes. On the current state of your Dallas Cowboys. Now your host, Nui Scruggs. Chase. Welcome to Dallas Cowboys Training Camp Media Mash episode number one of the season here at Oxnard, California. We've got a lot of topics to get to. That's Dave Hellman, Fox Sports down there on the end. Clarence Hill, Fort Worth Star Telegram, the longest serving beat writer here in the Metroplex, Mark, Metroplex market and the newest member of DallasCowboys.com. Patrick Walker, gentlemen, I'm going to go right into this because we got 45 minutes. A whole lot of things have been popping up. You're not out wasting here. any time. No, I appreciate no, that. We got no much. time to waste, All baby. Right. Let's get right into it. Tell me the position group you feel good about, Dave, and the position group that says, ooh, I got concerns. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I really like – actually, I'm writing about it right now. I'm, I've been very impressed with the Cowboys secondary, which I think is probably the first time I've ever said that at training camp in 10 years. Uh, bad? I mean, receiver's easy. I'll let somebody else do that. Um, I also think offensive tackle is, is something that concerns me just when you think uh, Matt Willetsko is already hurt and there's just not a whole lot of depth there. So that's definitely something that I've got my eye on. Clarence? Uh, let's go negative first. The concerns are that clearly – like, That sounds like you, Clarence. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, that's just, <laughs> on brand, let's, boy. Let's, on brand. What? I'm just, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> let's go concerns first. Let's, let's call it in other words. Use a different word. Use some tenderness as you There's go into tenderness. it. Language. I mean, clearly, um, kicker. Mm. Fair. Yeah. Kicker. Mm. That's fair. They yeah. don't have a damn kicker. They missed three games last year with three points or less. Field goal is missing these games. Kicker is a huge problem. It's a huge concern. I remember coming to camp when kickers didn't miss kicks in camp. Now we, we got misses every day, and three of eight, four of eight, and, and this, it, it's, a, it's a joke right now. Seriously. It's Mike McCarthy talks so much about how close games are and okay. game situations, okay? We know th- most, a lot of games are decided by one score or less or three points or less, and you go into camp with this kicking situation and act like it's okay. It's not okay. That's a, that's a huge problem. Obviously, receiver remains a question. I think it was a question before James Washington got hurt. And it's a bigger question now. They can talk all day about Michael Gallup's coming back. We all know that receivers, players are not at their best after ACL injuries until a full season after that. One year after that. He's not going to be Michael Gallup this year at all at not, not one point. So that, that's a problem. You know, you're asking Dak to do too much with, with C.D. Lamb and a bunch of maybes. So he talked about the offensive line, offensive tackle, certainly. Positives. Positives. Yeah. The running back position. Mm. The running back position is go. a huge thumbs up. Zeke, Tony Pollard, give me more of that. Okay. Can you start with the positive? I will start with the positive. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I, got you. I will start with the positive. So, get, thank I you, Patrick. We will start with the positive. I, I've been most impressed uh, with the interior defensive line. I like how these young guys are coming along in camp. Uh, I believe that Neville Gallimore, now that he's healthy, he could be on the verge of having a breakout season for the Cowboys. I think that will, in and of itself, uh, create a leadership role in that particular unit that the others are going to feed off of. Spoke, spoke with Osa Digizua a couple days ago, and he said he feeds off of specifically a player like Gallimore. And then when he sees Gallimore getting after the quarterback, he said, and I quote, I want to get me some too. That's an infectious energy that you see kind of, trim, tr- uh, you know, trickling down, for lack of a better way to put it, to the other guys. So this is a young group. Yeah, there's still work to be done. But I, I think that the Cowboys are going to take a step forward on the interior defensive line, and they're going to need to, which will then help the defensive ends get after the, the quarterback that much better. Talk about second-round pick Sam Williams. Talk about Durant Armstrong, who I'm of the opinion that he's very undervalued just generally, but he is very good at what he does. Um, now I'm going to pull a chill. We'll go to the concerns. Yes. Okay. Uh, my concern is I, I'm going to go with the obvious, the wide receiver room. Thanks for uh, setting me up on that there, Dave. I mean, it, it's right there for you, buddy. It, it's Take right it there, and, and somebody's got to say it. So, you know, dirty job. Somebody's got to do it. Wide receiver core. Um, you know, obviously, you, you trade away four-time Pro Bowl Lamar Cooper. You lose Cedric Wilson to the Miami Dolphins in free agency. You're coming into this season knowing that you're not going to have Gallup to start the season. You send uh, C.D. Lamb to the wide receiver one role. Wonderful. I think that, that he's ready for that. But behind him, 
yeah, we're seeing consistency from Noah Brown, who's having a fantastic count, by the way. Um, but other than Lamb or Brown, huge question marks. You love what you're seeing in training camp from rookie third-round pick Jalen Tobert. I think we can all agree on that. Vasher has flashed at times. Want to see more consistency from, uh, from Vasher. I like what I'm seeing from a guy like Dennis Houston. He's out there in camp. He's making plays from the slot, the X, the Y. He's doing everything the Cowboys need him to do. I'm very intrigued with how they're trying to get Kevontae Turpin involved in the offense now that they've lost James Washington, and they're choosing to not go and get a wide receiver. But, see, therein lies the rub. So, for me, I think that you need to not wait necessarily for the plan to develop because it may not develop. I think you still need to go out there and get a wide receiver that's proven, more proven than James Washington was at the time of that signing. So then at worst case scenario, you're going to have a veteran who okay. can come into the locker room and teach these young guys some things. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask each of you. I'll start with you, uh, Clarence Hill. I want you to be Jerry's confidant, okay? Jerry's confidant. What would you tell him? to do with the wide receiver position in terms of a better veteran, a veteran right now? What would you do? We'll go down the list here. You know, uh, I think they're going to add a wide receiver, and I, I will tell them add a wide receiver. They're going to add a wide receiver before the start of the season, whether it's after final cuts, whether it be a trade. They're going to a waiver wire, somebody off the streets. They're going to add a wide receiver. And we know we all have come from um, – the media party, and we, we talked to Steven and Jerry. and, and, and How are you feeling, by the way? I, I feel good. I feel good. <laughs> I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. <laughs> True. Not your first rodeo. Uh, but they're going to add a wide receiver, and, and they should. Uh, you know, everybody gets involved with the names and just, just talking to them last night. They think, you know, it was pointed out that Odell Beckham was able to come into the Rams without training camp, without offseason, and have an immediate impact. They think there's a veteran out there that can do that. You know, they don't need necessarily okay. need to have him in camp right now. But whenever they decide to make that move, they can find a veteran who can come and have an immediate impact because he's a veteran because he's been around the block. So they will get about wide receiver. Patrick Walker, you're Jerry's confidant, wide receiver room. What do you tell him? I'm telling him I understand that you want to see these young guys and what they can do over the next several weeks in training camp and, you know, the, the joint practice against the Broncos, Chargers, those preseason games. I understand that makes sense by all means, but you can do two things at once. You can walk and chew gum. So go out and okay. you, you get a guy like, for, for example, you have a T.Y. Hilton out there who I'd be big on. Yes, he's had some injury history, but you don't need him for the long run. Right, because Gallup and or James Washington should be back around early October ish. Right. So you don't you just need that insurance to not start off one and two, potentially zero oh and three or worse. Go and make that happen. There are others out there. You mentioned OBJ. I'm not big on on those that are saying, well, go and get Odell Beckham Jr. Why? So he can join Michael Gallup in rehabilitation. That, that doesn't make sense for me because he was a late season torn ACL as well. So for me, you got guys like T.Y. Hilton. You got guys like Emmanuel Sanders, who I think still has a little bit of tread left on the tires. You have some options there. They won't be expensive. They're sitting there waiting for calls. Now's the time to make that call. Mr. Helmet, why can't we do both? That's what I say. Right. Think, think about Walk this. Walk and chew gum. You got well, not like, but why can't? If I was Jerry's confidant, I'd be like, you could make two moves at this position, my man. Because, okay, Ceedee Lamb's a great start. To Clarence's point, Michael Gallup is going to miss some time. He could miss as much as the first month of the season, and on top of that, he might not. He might not. I don't want to completely rule it out, but like, he might not be the same guy right away. It's hard to come back from those types of injuries. James Washington, career best. 700 yards on the season, that can be upgraded. And then, I mean, you know, you feel good about Jalen Tolbert. I hate the idea of immediately putting these crazy expectations on him. Even Michael Gallup had – and they weren't very good receivers. That's why they traded for Amari Cooper. But um, Michael Ma Gallup was not great as a rookie. No, he, but, and, but even then he had a lot of help. Like right. he had a lot of other receivers helping him carry that Sucks. load. So my point is you could do a trade – I've heard people mention a couple names. A couple names that sound intriguing. Pat, we were talking about him in practice the other day. Uh, Denzel Mims yep. seems like he's on the outs with the New York Jets. Second round pick out of Baylor from a few okay. years ago. Jalen Rager, local guy, TCU. Hasn't really had a, uh, a ton of success in Philadelphia. If the Eagles were willing to do a deal with a division rival, I'd say you go give up like a day three pick for a guy like that who's got a little more experience than the dudes that are here, which basically means more than none because that's what you're working with right now. And then you could still go get yourself a Sanders or a Hilton or whatever. Or Will Fuller. Let, let, or, yeah. let me just, one thing the Cowboys need is, is, is a guy that can take the top off the defense. I mean, we love CD, but he's a 4 six guy. And you need a guy opposite him that can run. I don't know. He beat Trayvon Diggs pretty good today. Okay, stop. Just saying. He's yeah. still a 4 six guy. Yeah. You still need a guy to take the top off the defense. Okay. 
I just like to argue with you, Jeff. <laughs> so, so when you say that, the name will. So when you say that, the name Will Filter does come yeah, to mind. But we know the soft fun. tissue injuries are just yeah. that, that's just part of his game. Uh, Jalen Rager, reading John Clark uh, over at NBC uh, Philadelphia, it looks like they just may cut him. Um, and if you do get him, the problem with Jalen Rager is the dropsies. Mm-hmm. And I want to be clear. I, I know Jalen Rager hasn't had a great career, but again, you're still talking about a guy that has played. NFL games, which is more than most of the guys on this okay. roster. No, 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 I'm just, I'm just, just throwing those out there. So you've got that, and then of course, um, we saw when this team tried to get away with it before they ended up, as Clarence said, uh, giving up a number one pick for mm, Amari Cooper. Yeah. So it's going to be very interesting. When do they decide? Okay, let's hit that button. Now let me bring this back into Dak Prescott. I was asked a little bit of the press conference today. I remember when Tony Romo was here. We didn't know who Miles Austin was. Romo developed a chemistry with Miles Austin, becomes a Pro Bowl player. Uh, Laurent Robinson had a good chemistry with Tony, ends up signing a big time deal in Jacksonville that Tony helped make those players. We're seeing Aaron Rodgers do what Alan Lazar. So, can we expect Dak Prescott, Mr. Walker, to try and develop and make a Houston, to make a Tolbert? You know, can he do that, or are we asking too much? No, I believe he absolutely has the ability to do it, and, and I believe that given his role on the team and, you know, the franchise quarterback, you got the big money, these are the expectations that come with that. You're not always going to get the prepackaged superstar that you got in Amari Cooper, for example, who's the definitive mm-hmm. number one wide receiver. Sometimes you're going to have to turn guys into that dude, Miles Austin being an example with Tony Romo. So I do believe that can do it, and I believe that you're starting to see him get some, some chemistry with guys like Dennis Houston that makes you feel like... Like, that might be a storyline to watch over the course of the first okay. several weeks of the regular season. So, can Dak do it? Yes. He's also going to be asked to do it because it's time for him to continue to prove that, hey, I don't simply need that ready-made superstar. Thank you for CeeDee Lamb, but I can make these other guys great as well. And that's what great quarterbacks do. They make everyone around them better, right? Yeah, and, and, and I'm glad you brought that up because that's, that's our package this week at the Star Telegram. We're, we're, we're examining – Dak's ability to be that guy to make guys better. Can he be that? Because that's what the Cowboys are asking him to do. We know he's a franchise quarterback. We know he's a very good quarterback. I think he's a top 10 quarterback. The Cowboys are asking him this year, the way they've constructed this roster with the offensive line and receiving core, to be the difference maker, to uplift parts of the team that's not great. And that's what you're asking. That's the next level. If you want to be elite, be a difference maker. Okay. Be, be Aaron Rodgers. Be to make those guys better. That's 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 the goal. That's the charge for Dak Prescott in 2022. I just want to point out, you have to give Dak credit for doing that already, right? When you think of Cedric Wilson's a $20 million he receiver. He certainly did. That was it. Cole Beasley, Dak Prescott had a hand in getting him $30 million. Mm-hmm. Dalton Schultz is on the franchise tag, which has a lot to do with Dak Prescott as well. So, I, I mean, he's done these types of right. things before. I will say – what they're asking him to work with right now is worse than well, that. Well, that's, like, that's, that's the but, issue. But, but and, and at the risk, and I think everybody at this point knows that I'll go to bat for Dak Prescott any time, but, like, at some point you you got you to gotta do a little bit, right? I mean, like, you know, Cedric Wilson is a sixth-round pick who was a, a fourth-year player by the time he got the bag last year. Cole Beasley worked his way through this organization for damn near a decade. Dalton Schultz really took the next step in his third and fourth year. These guys are... Rookies and USFL players, man, undrafted at that. Right. A lot of them. Like I just like, it's fine to ask your quarterback to do more with less, and I, it sounds mean to a lot of these guys that are out here, but it kind of feels like they're asking them to do more with nothing. Well, and it, that is and, I, and, and, and Aaron Rodgers had to do it. And and, and I I, I think, mean and and that's completely fair. It's also completely reasonable to say. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is is Aaron a, Rodgers. he's a but, damn near one of one. But like, you're asking Dak to be Aaron Rodgers like, and and just to piggyback on what you're saying, and I I, I agree. You say well, he made Cedric Wilson, he made uh, Dalton Schultz, but he also had Amari Cooper and C.D. Lamb and Michael Gallup, which allowed those yeah. guys to you're not wrong to, to flourish. To, to flourish. Right. He doesn't have those guys. Defensive so, coordinators were not sitting up here. Hey, <laughs> let's double up Dalton Schultz. Exactly. Like that, so. They yeah. want ex- let's double up Cedric Wilson. So it's it's a different animal this year. He's asked to elevate guys who you know w- without the benefit of, of being wide open because of the coverage going to Amari Cooper and C.D. Lamb and those. Well, here, here's a bit of a counterpoint to that as well because if we're talking about you know young unknown guys coming into the league 
league, can Dak Prescott make them better? I think what will help them out in that capacity potentially is the fact that opposing defensive coordinators don't have any film on a lot of these guys. So a lot of these guys are not going to see double teams, so forth and so on. What defensive coordinators have film on, Dalton Schultz, for example, they have film on CeeDee Lamb. They're going to start throwing and shading towards those areas. That's going to let some of these younger guys roam and get in space, and then what they do from there is what they do from there. What I need Dak to do. Is, is use his feet more this year. Oh, absolutely. Year. Oh, give me, give me some on that. That's what I need. Yeah, that. I'm, not, I'm not saying be Michael Vick, no. but I need you when 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 the, it's an open lane, Take it. go get it. Because there were first go downs eat. that he passed up last go year eat. trying to throw the ball. Go eat. All right, let's take a break here. And uh, By the way, nobody here mentioned Semi Fajoko as a possible mm. possible player. He had, nice, he, had a, he had a nice day of practice today. You had, oh, you had, to, you had, you had, you had more than enough time to reach it. <laughs> nobody cared about Semi. <laughs> sorry, so. Semi. Okay, sorry, Semi. Uh, nobody cares about Keep you here. Dennis right? Houston is going to be three. Victor Cruz, number three. Watch that. Keep up the good work, Semi. Okay. I see you, Semi. When we come back. Are we too hard on Mike McCarthy as media members and Anthony Barr coming to the Cowboys? Your thoughts on that? Patrick Walker, Clarence Hill, Dave Hellman. I'm Newey Scruggs. This is Media Mash episode number one on DallasCowboys.com radio. Star Sports Tours is the only official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, offering exclusive game weekend travel packages with pregame sideline access and photo ops with current players, cheerleaders, and Cowboy legends. You want to stay at a team hotel, attend the best tailgate party in Texas, tour the star, and talk X's and O's with me, Everson Walls? With Star Sports Tours, you can. Visit CowboysTravel.com to book your travel package today. Brace yourself for an existential question. Has your butt been having enough fun lately? Have you been treating it well? Has it been going places? If not, then it's about time you start using SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the best way to get your butt tickets to live events. Just ask the thousands of other butts who have rated it the number one ticketing app. So what are you waiting for? Download the app now or visit SeatGeek.com to get tickets to sports, concerts, and live events and make your butt happy. SeatGeek, get your seat in a seat. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day, where we are all defined by one single thing, the star, where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Attention Cowboys fans looking for the best shave of your life. There's a new official razor of the Dallas Cowboys, Shave Logic. Imagine not having to buy blades as often and getting more smooth shaves than your old razor, guaranteed or your money back. After more than 10 years of research and over 150 company patents, ShaveLogic is proud to offer Cowboys fans a special offer. For a limited time, visit ShaveLogic.com and get a free $10 gift card with your purchase. Go to ShaveLogic.com now for more smooth shaves guaranteed. Back, back, back to back. Media Mash. Episode number one of Media Mash continues here from Cowboys Training Camp in Oxnard, California. We've got Patrick Walker, DallasCowboys.com. With us is Clarence Hill, Fort Worth Star Telegram. Dave Hellman of Fox Sports. Gentlemen, Anthony Barr is now in the fold. George Edwards had him in Minnesota. Dan Quinn is the defensive coordinator here. So I'll start with you first, Mr. Hellman. What do you expect from Anthony Barr, and do you give this a thumbs up or thumbs down, Sonic? I definitely give it a thumbs up. I mean, I think you probably got to couch the expectations. He's coming off. He's got knee issues of his own. This is a guy who was drafted the same year as Zach Martin. I don't think you're probably not getting Pro Bowl production right here in 2022, but this is a guy who can play off ball. I would expect he's going to be early down run defense as an off ball linebacker. He's also got some pass rush ability, 17 and a half career sacks. Was a very good edge rusher in college. Obviously, that was a lifetime ago. But, I mean, this is a guy that Dan Quinn should be able to move around. I think he can blitz. I think he can rush off the edge if they want him to. Uh, and I think it's it's just another body to throw at, at the problem, which that's the – I say problem, which isn't even the right word because what I was going to say is all of a sudden, like, all the star power on this team is on defense, yep. which is – the first time in my time covering the team that I've ever felt that way. I looked this up last night. They got five former first-round picks on their roster and 17 guys that were drafted in the top 100. That's wild to me because I just remember years where we would come out to Oxnard and be like, who are these guys that Dez and, 
and Beasley are kicking the crap out of day after day. And uh, that's that's not the case right now. Say something positive, Chill. <laughs> <laughs> keep what's keep what's strong strong. Okay. Make what's strong strong. That's what they're doing. Okay. And, 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 and you know, I argued with Stephen last night. He like, well, give us credit. Well, they kind of fell into this. I mean, you know, they got him. It's not like they invested in all these guys, but the defense is strong. And one thing I wanted to mention earlier, we were talking about the positives. I think the safety group. Is, is one of the strongest positions on the yep. team. As good as I can remember it being. And then again, well, give us credit for the safety. Steven, you fell into these safeties. You didn't invest in them, but, but you won. Yeah. I give you, 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 you know, you didn't, was, you know. J Ron, Malik, <laughs> and Anthony Bark, their original contracts, that's like a combined $3 million. <laughs> right. Like, you kind of fell But yes, keep us strong, strong. But yeah, the bar allows Micah. Yep. To be more versatile it allows you to rush Micah from the edge. Which people talk about, you know, you want to Micah to rush off the edge. You want Micah to rush the quarterback. Mike McCarthy talked about it. We want Micah going after the ball. Bar allows him to do that because he can do some of the Micah things in the middle of the defense. Certainly, he can rush like Micah, but Bar allows you to be and Dan Quinn to be more versatile and more complex in their rush packages. But mainly, allow Micah to rush off the edge. Big thing for me, first of all, two thumbs up. Two big toes up, however you want to uh, settle it up. When it comes to Anthony Barr, the word that keeps coming up in discussions about Anthony Barr is versatility. Versatility, versatility. So now you're adding his versatility with that of Michael Parsons. Uh, Anthony Barr, as Hellman so eloquently put, he can put his hand in the dirt and go get the opposing quarterback. But at the same time, he's excellent in the coverage. This is a guy who in only 11 games of 2021, three interceptions, five pass breakups. He can, do, he can get the job done in coverage. Now, that allows Michael Parsons to do what McCarthy wants, which is go get the quarterback more often than not. But there's a, a, an accessorial item to this that's a benefit as well, which is Jabril Cox. The Cowboys are expecting big things from Jabril Cox as soon as is possible. But he's coming off of a torn ACL, second year in the league. There might be a bit of a ramp up. We're talking about will Michael Gallup be the same? Okay, well, you're talking about Jabril Cox has – to get back to his top form that he showed at LSU, but also he has to do so and learn how to be a starting linebacker in the NFL. I think Anthony Barr, playing understudy, for lack of a better way to put it, to Anthony Barr, which in no way, shape, or form means that Cox will not get his snaps because he will, but being able to study a guy like Barr, a four-time pro bowler, one who's done it under George Edwards, okay. that can only help Jabril Cox get better that much faster. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think a pitch count, you know? Yeah, I don't think it's a coincidence. No, not at all. That Jabril Cox has missed the last three days of practice, and Anthony Barr showed up. Ooh. Okay, that's uh, <laughs> Look at okay. Brian Windhorst. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he got about, me on that one. I, when I talk why to would Steve, this? Why yeah. would this happen? I mean, he just uh, missed days. Uh, <laughs> and, well, well, they, and then you saw him out there, and he had a big heavy bandage on his knee while he was working out with Britt today. Well, well, they say Cox is expected back on Saturday. I, I understand and that. And Barr's starting off on Pup. I, I understand. So it's not like but Barr's, Barr's getting dropped in right now. Barr's not for now. But I'm just saying, yeah, though, that, right. that, that, that the whole, you know, when I talked to Steven last week, when he's, you know, after the reports were the Cowboys had closed the door on Barr, and he told me, no, the door's still open. And part of what they wanted to see how Jabril Cox mm -hmm. came back from the injury. I think it's it, connected it, it, dots. I think it's. I don't think you're too far off, but I think it's a situation Not where with <laughs> 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 Windhorse still. <laughs> Not off I think <laughs> I think it's a situation where the cow the Cowboys saw what their linebacker core would look like without Jabril Cox <laughs> and Mike is still needing a little bit of help. It's Not you know, no knock to, you know, guys like Luke Gifford and, and some of these. Malik other, Jefferson, I had yeah, so Malik much hope for him to right. come in and be that guy. He can go to the so, quarterback. So Fuck him hard, point. Malik. Let's get it done. So to my point, while you cheerlead for your horn, <laughs> uh to my point, they saw what it looks like behind Jabril Cox and then they said, you know what, whatever that financial gap was that kept us from getting uh, Anthony Barr, just give him a call, throw the extra you know, a little bit of bag on the table. Let's get him in here. And so they did. All right, medium ash. There David. was no bag, sir. No, I said I said a little oh, bitty. Okay. <laughs> a little bag. I, I did say little. Yeah. Itty bitty. I did, I did, I did, I did say, I did say <laughs> little itty bitty. I did say little itty bitty. You're right. I quantified it accurately, Chill. I quantified it, it accurately. It was a Leighton Van Der Esch bag. Yeah, there, there you go. There you go. special. There you go. There you go. His bag is still bigger than mine. <laughs> medium ash, Dave Hellman, Clarence Hill, Patrick Walker, Newey Scruggs joining you from Oxnard, California. Okay. Okay, so um, 
there's some people that think that we're too hard on Mike McCarthy and that we haven't given Mike credit. So uh, I'll start with you, Mr. Positive, Clarence Hill. <laughs> Do you feel like you, I'm talking about you, and your reporting for the Star-Telegram, you've been too hard on Mike? No, I have not been hard on Mike. And it's funny because, um, you know, Jerry came out, I need to put this to bed. You guys, it's unfair to Mike. It's unfair to Mike that his job's being you questioned. You started it. It's unfair to yep. Mike. It's unfair to Mike and his football team. His job's being questioned. It's a little bit of gaslighting. Come on, yeah. Jerry. You were the one who put, who, 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 who started this narrative. He, in the same breath, this unfair to Mike, he tells, tells us in the walk-off. People wonder why we do walk-offs. We get the real stuff in the walk-offs. Don't underestimate the walk-offs. In the walk-off, he tells us that he wanted to let the league know to keep the league away from Dan Quinn, I want to let, let the league know that Dan Quinn's a possibility to be my head coach. Well, if you let the league know, 32 teams, 32 GMs, 32 owners, 32 coaches who got assistant coaches and wives and agents and everybody else, if you let the league know that Dan Quinn is possibly your head coach, you also let the league know what? That Mike McCarthy might not be your head coach. So who started this fire? Who helped fan the flame to this fire? So it's not the media. You know, if you go back to the end of last year, when they lost that game in San Francisco, it was Jerry who hedged on Mike McCarthy. That's when the he stuff started. Happy. He was not happy. And then Dan Quinn starts interviewing, and then you start letting people know that Dan Quinn might be your head coach. In addition to the Sean Payton stuff, that wasn't us being hard on Mike McCarthy. Now, we have, we have reason to be hard on him. He had some game, play, game uh, management things that came up. I pointed out at the press conference. When he told us at the press conference after the San Francisco game that his players were nervous, he felt they were nervous in the locker room, and you let them walk out there, and you thought they were nervous, I'd have been shaking the room. I'd be wake the hell up. While the other team walks out with a boom box. Yes. Don't he, relax. He, he, had, he, <laughs> had, he, he, relax. he volunteered and said he felt his guys were nervous. What? And okay. you let them walk out there? So, and I come back to the original question. Do you feel like we, and even you in your writing, have you been too hard on Mike McCarthy? No, no, but the facts are he's on the hot seat. Okay, Patrick, you, know, you, you were working someplace else before DallasCowboys.com. Mm -hmm. Were you too hard on Mike? No, I, I've always tried to shoot it straight. I think okay. Mike McCarthy is a really good coach in the NFL, um, but when it's time to give a demerit, you give a demerit. When it's time to give a credit, you give a credit. You, you're talking about a coach going into his third year. Obviously, things didn't go well in year one. That was mostly on McCarthy because, McCarthy, you brought in Mike Nolan. You handed the defense to him. So every bit of a disaster that, that, that became of that defense that season, you got to own that. You got to eat and digest that. To his credit, though, Immediate pivot in year two, you go and you get Dan Quinn as your defensive coordinator. Stroke, okay. a, stroke a genius. So it's it's that kind of duplicity with Mike McCarthy right now. Now, also, as we sit here and have this conversation, this is his first full, actual, traditional training camp with the team. And he was still able to pull off 12-5 and five last season. Unfortunately, they crapped the bed in, on wild card weekend. Again, demerit. You criticize him for that. You make him digest that. But then that doesn't necessarily take away from the success they had and being in that position in the first place. 12 and 5, which still not a real training camp, so to speak, until this year post-pandemic. Post and I use the word, you know, the term post very lightly. Um, but I, I still think McCarthy can win a Super Bowl in Dallas. I believe that can happen. That said, he is absolutely on the hot seat, regardless of what Jerry might say publicly. And I want he's not the only coach who had – you know, pandemic-related issues. Oh, agree. Okay. Hey, yeah. Tom, hey, a lot of other <laughs> coaches have been on that. Hey, listen, <laughs> you're absolutely correct because you look at what happened in Tampa. Tom Brady was his first year in Tampa. You know, the familiarity basically just extended to Gronk and whomever else he decided to, you know, co coerce the team into to hiring. But that's a fair point. That said, only one team can win the Super Bowl, right? So there you go. I drank the Kool-Aid when Mike first got here, okay? I was all about it. And Mike Nolan and Jim Tom Sula. Yeah, you got to eat that. Mike Nolan was horrible. And, I just, horrible and, did, they, and then they did not handle COVID and, and the virtual learning well at all. Nope. So I jumped off. You know, George Bush said, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. Can't get food Can't again. Can't get food again. I Can't get food again. <laughs> so, so he has the year he had last year. And then it comes play out. It, the penalties, wow. Oh, okay, the yeah. penalties were yeah. terrible. The game management at times. It was, it was interesting to see how Packer fans would come on the Cowboy timeline on Twitter like, oh, we could have told you this was going to happen. Seen this before. Things haven't changed. Right. And so 
Uh, but now I'm I am more open minded than ever. Uh, what I've seen out here, Mike, so far, I see. I think he's at his. He, he, he's confident. Mm-hmm. I hadn't seen him this confident since he's been here. I do think that there. I felt there were times, especially the first year, he didn't really like this. Ain't Green Bay, man. It's yeah, diff- this is a different deal, man. Right. You know, this this is a different deal. And I think <laughs> he's gotten more comfortable with it. I think he's having fun with these Jerry press conferences. Like, okay, oh. he's like, why well, even come up here sometimes? I, I, so, I, I'm, I'm just shocked that you've been in the league this long that you didn't know what you was getting into when you got in bed with Jerry Jones. I I living I, in that I, Green uh, Bay bubble. Speaking to like his lands, <laughs> his comments about the lands. Yes, yeah. How do you, how did you that, not man. know? I thought about that a few times, and like people bring it up all the time. The comments he made in the introductory presser, where he's like, "I just told him what they wanted to hear," basically. And I'm just like, "Did you want to get it back into coaching so bad that you took a job that you knew might not mesh with your personality?" Because that's what it seems like. Well, well, Wade Phillips with with Jason Garrett. Well, yeah, Wade, you Wade to, just wanted a head coaching job. Right. So and, and you had Texas. to take you had to take Jason. So okay, Jerry, that's fine. So I'm not the, the only guy running through here who just said, okay, what what I need. I, got, to do? I mean, there's 32 of them. You got to do what you got to do. I I'm right where I've always been on Mike. Honestly, when they announced his hire, I was like, okay, I don't feel super inspired about this, but. Jerry Jones definitely wanted a guy with a better resume than Jason Garrett, and this is what that looks like. And here we are. There have been some ups and downs. Um, I think I feel exactly the way about him that you – I think you should about a third-year coach who had one bad season and one good where you're like, all right, this is like the rubber match. Right. And to Clarence's point, I'm so glad you said that because that, that was actually one of the most surreal moments of my career. When I was still a DallasCowboys.com employee, I went to the Senior Bowl – Jory Epstein and I were the only two, our dear friend Jory, were the only two reporters that went. And I think it pissed Jerry off that, like, he didn't get his normal amount of attention. 18,000 people right. trying to talk to him. And he's sitting there talking about how, you know, Dan Quinn would be a great head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. And, like, Jory and I just peppered him with questions. Like, I specifically remember saying, don't you think it might bother Mike that you're just sort of talking about his job as if it's up for grabs? And he said, Mike knows he's not going to be the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys forever. Which is true. I recall. But isn't that but there's an some insane, nuance. But there's isn't that an insane thing yeah. to say? Right, yeah. you just don't say about all a that. guy that just won twelve games. Yeah. And so I, I and, know and you, that you haven't, you know, given the uh, uh the go ahead, he's gonna be my coach right. next year. And I you I know you gotta go to break, but like all of this I think everyone in the world would be like, yeah, like Mike McCarthy's doing a pretty good job. Like, I don't think he would be on the hot seat if it weren't for Jerry Jones. This is not a media narrative. This is Jerry Jones throwing him onto the hot seat himself in January and then getting mad at us for writing about it. Well, I'd love to do David Helm. He don't work for y'all no more. He can say what he want to say. Hi, hi, hi there. Unleash. 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 David Helm say it. Tell it. Say it with your chest. (laughs) Take a break. (laughs) Dan Quinn came out. <laughs> jumped on that grenade. <laughs> he jumped on that grenade. He did. He did. For Mike McCarthy yesterday. He sure did. <laughs> Let's dive into that next with Dave Hellman, Claire Till, Patrick Walker. I'm New East Cooks. This is Meaty Mash on DallasCowboys.com Radio. Brace yourself for an existential question. Has your butt been having enough fun lately? Have you been treating it well? Has it been going places? If not, then it's about time you start using SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the best way to get your butt tickets to live events. Just ask the thousands of other butts who have rated it the number one ticketing app. So what are you waiting for? Download the app now or visit SeatGeek.com to get tickets to sports, concerts, and live events and make your butt happy. SeatGeek, get your seat in a seat. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm a broken traffic light. Stop and go is the name of my game. It's easy. You go... They go, or was it they go, you go? (laughs) And if you have the wrong car insurance, these repair costs could stop you in your tracks. So get Allstate's new low auto rate and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Not available in every state, based on coverage and limits selected. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. In most states, prices vary based on how you buy. Allstate Bar and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. Hey, Cowboys fans, if you're thinking about attending a game this season, visit CowboysTravel.com to book your travel package today. Stay at the team hotel, have dinner with a Cowboys legend, and experience AT&T Stadium's exclusive VIP Owners Club. Also, tour the stars. Get autographs from your favorite players and talk X's and O's with me, Mickey Spagnola. The official travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys will take care of all your travel needs. Visit CowboysTravel.com. 
with Smoothie King's original angel food and new angel food slim without added sugar. You no longer have to choose between treating yourself and hitting your goals this summer. You don't have to choose between great taste and feeling great. Because at Smoothie King, every blend is made with whole fruits and no syrups, so you can satisfy your cravings without compromise. The only choice you will need to make is which one is best for you. Try our classic angel food or the new angel food slim, blended without added sugar. Smoothie King, rule the day. Back, back, back to back, back. Media Mash. Media Mash from Dallas Cowboys Training Camp in Oxnard, California. I'm Newey Scruggs, joined by Patrick Walker of DallasCowboys.com, Clarence Hill Star Telegram, and Dave Hellman of Fox Sports. So we talked about Mike McCarthy last segment here, and let's move into Dan Quinn and, and Clarence. I thought you asked another one of your tenderness-type questions. And Clarence has been on his A game yeah. out here in Thank Oxnard. you for the tenderness, Clarence. Yes, yes. Thank so, you for the uh, t- Tender love over here. So, Tenderoni. Uh, getting, all the, getting all the A-plus sound bites out here in Oxnard. Yes, Clarence, so. yeah. I mean, Dan Quinn complimented Clarence on the question. Uh, what was the exact question again that you hit, you hit DQ with about McCarthy? You know, it was really just about the relationship with McCarthy after all the muck that Jerry started, the media started of last, you know, in the offseason about his job. And I just wanted him to talk about their relationship. And, and you know, obviously he's he said, you know, Mike McCarthy told us, and obviously he, he said in the story with, with Jory that, that he offered to leave, you know, if, if this was too much. And, and, and obviously they decided that wasn't the right thing. They wanted to win together. But I just needed him to talk about, their relationship and and the, I I'd love the quote because it's always it's it's really about the the answer, you know just like the you know the, the Jerry thing it's about the answer not about the question it's about the answer you, you need to get the answer and the great answer was you know I'm here looking around corners, the wire I'm I'm working corners for Mike okay <laughs> I'm not trying to take his corners right. I'm working corners he right. said I'm looking around corners I'm not coming, I don't think I'm not coming around the corner taking some poetic he, license yeah, yeah, this. He, yeah. He, he, no he said I'm a guy. Who looks around corners for he my? Did, he so talked about his job. job. To look, that, look around, to look around corners, corners. He, not uh, come around the corner for his job. But he so, wasn't talking about corners like the wire, though. I mean, I, come I, on, I, you I, got this. Come on, I got it. I got it. I mean, I come sorry. on. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. literally, he was not talking about doing drugs. <laughs> I mean, I know we got to put that out there for David Hellman. He was not talking about doing drugs and working corners. All right, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Can you? What is it? I'm literally. I mean, <laughs> just, 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 you're just killing the flame. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Line, Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. working these corners for you. I'm not trying to take your corner. I'm watching things. I'm looking out for you. I'm trying to help you win. I'm not trying to take your job, and which is a great quote, and that's, that's what it's about. I was thinking you were going to follow it up today with, with Mike, and you didn't. So I tried, and then he just he just poo pooed on me. But but I tried to get. I've it. asked Mike a number of times here about his relationship with Dan. You know, during the, on the podium and on the walk off. So I mean, he talked about it. I mean, you you reiterated it again today. What'd you take from it? Uh, my thing is, uh, I think the relationship between McCarthy and Dan Quinn is is not only close, but it's genuine. Uh, and obviously, you know, it comes under attack here this past offseason, especially with Sean Payton walking away from the New Orleans Saints, but not contractually because he's still on the contract at the moment. But obviously you got Sean Payton. He's always going to be a big fish, a whale uh, tied to the Cowboys as a potential head coach. Obviously, there are ties with him and the organization back you in the You got Mike McCarthy thing. a whale? Uh, wow. <laughs> Listen, wow. no, I didn't. Listen, but <laughs> See, oh, that was being, no, no, that's being too hard <laughs> on Mike McCarthy. I was he was going to say, he was going to say, Mike has been boxing, so you might want to take it <laughs> yeah. easy. Mike knows how now to slip now. Oh, Mike, Mike knows how to slip sorry. now, but yeah, I think he, he won't go down like Calvin. Yeah, you know? listen. Mike, oh, you can't oh, slap him in the face oh, like you got Calvin. Why can But I think the relationship between those two is, is, is strong. Um, it, it's going to be tested, um, but I think it can withstand whatever test the, the media or whatever the narratives might be. Uh, at the end of the day, you, 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 know, you ask McCarthy these types of questions. What's your relationship with Dan Quinn? You ask Dan Quinn these questions. What's your relationship with Mike McCarthy? They're both in lockstep, and again, I believe it's authentic. I believe it's genuine. Um, and I, I feel like it's Mike McCarthy. Every time he a- answers one of those questions, I feel like it's him talking about the wire. It's him pulling the Marlowe, looking at the media and saying, hey, you want it to be one way. But it ain't it's that way. way. It's the other, it's way. The other way. Right. So that, I feel like they're, they're going to be fine. But Dan Quinn, no other way to put it. Dan Quinn has to be and likely is a candidate for potential future head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. But McCarthy can keep that at bay by winning games, particularly in the postseason. Yeah, I, I, you I say disagree with you on that. Wh- wh- which part do you disagree with? 
when he spoke about he can he can do this by winning games in the postseason. I mean, this oh, is an organ- this is an organization that let a man go who won two Super Bowls. So anything is possible mm, here. Valid, no, no, no. When I say keep him at bay, I mean for example, if they make the NFC Championship this year, that's one more year I believe that Quinn does not get in the head coaching oh, candidate. They get the NFC See, because at that point you're not wrong, but the likelihood of making an NFC Championship. With McCarthy, because the relationship between McCarthy and Jerry is still strong. I mean, Jerry does what he does publicly, and he creates the you know attention, so forth and so on. But at the end of the day, because that relationship is still positive, if McCarthy makes it to at least the NFC Championship, then we're not having this conversation for 2023 as far as is McCarthy still going to be in uniform, training camp, in you, 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 next you, you July. Know, you know, I, just, you I don't know believe com- that would be you a know question. You know the conversation we're having? Who, who replaces Dan Quinn? Mm-hmm. That would be the more viable conversation, and then and that nope. becomes and then that, that that's the, the full more circle for Jerry because Jerry also gave Dan Quinn a bump to stay, D- and, and, and there's a question if he gave him extension to stay, and, and and so no pressure, Mike. Just get to a game that the team hasn't played in in 26 years, and you can stave off the, the hey. speculation about your job, and which, and I, which is I what you were brought in. That that's what you were brought either. in to do. I mean, it never is. I, but that's I what hear you were brought you know, in I, to do. I tend to think I think it's that simple. If Mike can get them somewhere where they haven't been in, in, one, in that long, I think that would do it. I just I don't think that's going to happen though. That's the problem. Right, and, and and again, as we talked about Dak, did they set Mike up? Kind of feels that way. I, I, know, where, they, I, know, where you, I know where you're going. I with mean, this, this team is not as strong as it was a year ago. I know where you're going. You're, with you're, this. you're counting on, you know, they listen. They Chill give thinks it, they, they're trying to make it Peyton. They, 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 I don't know what they make it. They, they make it, maybe <laughs> make it a Dan Quinn friendly because they give a lot. They, they give the defense a lot. Uh-huh. They're not giving the offense much. Yes. I think they're doing a soft reboot, but that's a different topic. Yeah, Although I will, you know, I will so, say, I think yeah, it's but then if you're Kellen Moore, you're, you're sitting there like, hey, hey, hi, I need weapons as well. So I don't think Kellen Moore is just sitting back and and not saying anything. Is when he, you talk, what's he saying? He's got to be saying something because he's going from one of the hottest candidates as far as being a, a one of the young potential new head coaches in the league you, to last you, year. You've interviewed him. What what has he said? <laughs> He's, uh, he learned a lot from Jason. Perry, <laughs> when it comes That's to what that. I mean. <laughs> hey, Mike. Hey, there it is. Hey, 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 right on cue. Right on cue. <laughs> I believe in Boy. you, Coach. I just want to let you know. I'm all right here. I'm out Boy. here. Coach, I'm talking good about you over right here. here. The, devil, the devil will show up. Hey, <laughs> hey. That, well, Speaking of the devil, the devil will show up. Second I don't know if they told you that growing up. Absolutely. Well, okay. I just want to make sure I put it right here on camera. Right now. <laughs> Right now, <laughs> I believe in Mike. You know, it, 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 but, run the film but, back. But, but, but just to bring it back full Please. circle, I think that, that it, it it shows a growth in Mike, and he talked about it that as an older coach, and yeah, we he has a great relationship with Dan. He admitted that when I was younger, he he may have been using some of them boxing skills. Mm. He, he may have been fighting somebody with all the stuff that came up in off season mm. with Dan. And all the thing I think that the fact that he's older and more mature, he can handle it. And, and certainly the situation, you know, he could he's he's handled it well. I go back to what Parcells used to say. All I can go by is what I see. And what I see from Mike at this camp, he looks confident. Um, the team is doing what they need to be doing. What I hear from, especially the defensive players, is they believe in what's going on. The, the, the quarterback has a lot of confidence in the head coach. And if they can cut down on the penalties that he's talked about here, you know, they should have opportunities to be in some football games. And you just really, at this point in time, with the questions at kicker and wide receiver and, and offensive tackle, maybe this defense has to go out here and win some games and the yep. offense just Except does enough, you know, figure out a way to put up, you know, 23, 24 points to win some football games here, especially early on and then, and then see where they go. But um, right now, what I see so far, I'm very – I'm optimistic. And I can't say that I was that way – Maybe in April, but I am optimistic. Define optimistic for me, if you don't mind. Positive Pat. Not that. (laughs) Tell me some positive Pat. Um, Define define optimistic. I'm just curious. This playoff team. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, They play in the second worst division in the NFL. So? So Is that that good enough? That's not good enough. See, Jason Garrett got him to the playoff. Let Let me finish. Let me finish. Playoff team. And then when they get there, let's see what happens. But. I'm just telling you, in the spring, I wasn't there. When the schedule got released, I was not there. But I'm there. I'm there now. And what I'm seeing, and the more I talk to players about what they're doing and their confidence out here, 
I think they'll be a good football team. And, 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 and they and can make the, the playoffs. And, and that's one thing I, I do agree with Mike McCarthy. You got to keep getting there. The problem with the Cowboys, since I've been covering the team, that's right. you know, they don't – they don't have a lot of playoff experience because they don't have a lot of back-to-back playoff experience. You yeah. know, get back there. Let's see what we can do. And, and the, going on that, okay, what Mike McCarthy is attempting to do is to be the first head coach since Chan Gailey to go to back-to-back <sighs> playoffs. And, and that's – you, it, it, you talk about them being nervous, which, I mean, you're totally right. Yeah. Like, that's on Mike. But – Teams like San Francisco. I mean, San Francisco has been in the tournament more often than not for the last three or four years. I mean, they made a Super Bowl run. They made that run last year. What McCarthy did in Green Bay is incredible, getting in the playoffs for a decade. The more bites at the apple you get, even if you're, like, not that good of a team, the more likely it is that you'll stumble into some success. And that's just – it's if you're starting over, if you're in this pattern where you only get a crack at the playoffs every three years and you got to teach two-thirds of your roster what the playoffs are about – that ain't a recipe. Right, and that's why I say in the spring I wasn't there, and I'm optimistic now. I mean, think about what I just said. He has an opportunity to be the first coach since Chan Gailey yeah. in 1998 yeah. oh, yeah. and 1999 to yeah. take the Cowboys to back-to-back seasons in the playoffs. So that just <laughs> shows you. But he, right. he, and, and I was went, here, but I was here. That 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 that, that I mean, last that, team, but, but that lost like, to the like, Cardinals. Let that sink on in here. <laughs> yeah. Since Bill Clinton was president, you know. I didn't have a cell phone. Maybe I got a cell phone at the end of 98. I'm not real sure, <laughs> you know, but it's been – I was here. T- you know, we're talking about it that, was ugly, that long though. ago. I mean, 98, where were you, bro? Dave, where I were you in 98? Nah, I was in – Third or fourth grade. I mean, so, so this is significant yeah. that I'm sitting Ouch. that I'm sitting here telling you Ouch. I am optimistic oh, that they can make the playoffs. <laughs> right. It was but, ugly. So, so that's where I'm at, well, and I wasn't there in the spring because history says, "No, we don't. Don't don't take well, your money to Vegas right. on this." I mean, and I, I mean, I, I see this as like a nine-win team, probably. Yeah. I mean, it's early in training camp. Yeah, I got them in double once again. Pl- I got play, them in double you know, that, that, that should get you. No, nine no, ten sure. should get but you in the playoffs. In a weird way, that would be a victory, which is why this year, this season is so weird because we're sitting here saying like McCarthy's got to win playoff games with an S to guarantee his job, but like winning nine games in the East for this franchise would be. In a weird, I know nobody wants to hear me say this, but that would be in a weird way a win. I don't win. even want to hear it. That would be a <laughs> win to just be like we are consistently getting to the playoffs because I haven't been I haven't been through the wars like you, Clarence, and you, Nui. Need but more than that. I've done I've done ten years, and they've had yeah. three pretty damn good seasons in that. Actually, four if you count eighteen. Every time they have a good season, the next one is a dumpster fire. It is an absolute dumpster fire. Having to play that first place schedule, they've not been able to adapt well, but, to it and, all. That's, and, been, and, that's and, also been a part. But of it. I mean, there, there's always, it, it, there's just always something. Okay. With these guys. But, but my, my thing also is, and I mentioned this when I, uh, you know, I kind of touched on this with the Kellen Moore situation. We're doing a lot of talking about is Mike McCarthy the guy? Can he be the guy? Is Dan Quinn on his heels? You know, so to speak, as potential future head coach, et cetera, et cetera. But there's not enough being said about the pressure that's on Kellen uh, Moore okay. going into 2022. Look, look, but that's a whole another show. That's a whole other. <laughs> I just, had, I, I, I just I, had to I, throw it out there. All of we don't have enough time. I had to throw to it out there. Legitimate, legitimate. We, we got to get out another they day. Over, they opened with Tampa and Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. They played the Giants and Washington, and they got the Rams. Two and three is on how, the table. How Kellen Moore schemes Two and three open. is on the table. Then they, then they play at Philly. Okay, gentlemen, I feel like we're going down. A, uh, we, were, we were positive. Now I feel like we're going down. Let, let's just Turn end it there. Let's, just, yeah, let's just end it right there. Dave Hellman, Fox Sports. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you being here. All right. Tenderness, mother tenderness. <laughs> <laughs> Clarence Hill, dog team. Appreciate having you here, Patrick. Always. Congratulations. Welcome, on your new Patrick. Role welcome, here welcome, with welcome. Dallas Cowboys. Thank you, sir. you got more great than me, sir. Yes. yes thanks to Jazz, Chris, <laughs> Will, everybody behind the scenes, <laughs> Derek, know. Nick, great, right here, <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. Got a lot of kids too, <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Com, Radio. <laughs> Goodbye. Everybody, be quiet. <laughs> this has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?